Hi everybody, in this video I'm going to show you how did I build the Power Apps application using Dataverse as a data source. So let's start with this video. Okay. So let's see how can, can we create Power Apps application, but this time using Dataverse as the data source. So we will create a very similar functionality as what we saw in, in the previous video, the, the application that uses SQL as a data source. But in this case, we basically are going to use Dataverse, a Dataverse database. If you go to the data source, you will see that this application is using different, is connecting to different Dataverse tables. But before exploring the functionality, of this app, let's go to the Power Apps Maker portal. To create tables in Dataverse, you basically will need to go to Data, Tables, and here you will see that there are some standard tables. Those are like sample tables that it sees by default where each time you create a new environment, right? By default, you will see all of these tables. And you can see also some custom tables that are the ones that I have created for, for this demo, right? If you want to create a new table, it's easy. You can click on new table and you can specify the table name as well as the prim primary name column that by default usually is name. However, this is not the best practice. The best practice is to use a solution. To do that, you can go to solutions and you can create a, a new solution, right? In this case, I, I previously created this solution, a MWS solution version two. If I click here, you will see that uh, basically a solution is um, a package, right? This package will contain, or, or basically it's a container. This container will contain different components for your solution. Like for example, it could be a Power Apps Canvas app or a model driven app. It could be different tables that are part of my solution. It could be even flows from Power Automate. So there are different components that you can add to your solution. In this case, for example, you can click on new and you can create your own table. This is going to be very similar to what you can do from the data and table section. And you can easily create your, your table. For this example, you can use what, uh, any of, of the options, but my recommendation is to work with solutions. If you're interested to know how to work with solutions, I can do a, a video. Just let me know in the comments. So you see here that we have different tables that I previously created, and those tables are very similar to the ones that we created in SQL. In this case, for example, I have the course table, course category, language, the level, modality, and professor. And you will see that we that I also have created a Dataverse Power Apps Canvas app here. To create a, a Canvas app, you can just click on New, Apps and Canvas app. Let's look at, for example, course category. If we go, if we click on course category, we will see that this is a simple table that only has one column, which is basically the name. By default, all the tables have uh, different different columns that are like a standard or, or default columns that have some information in each record, right? If you want to see all the, the records on this table, you can click on data. And you will see that I have added uh, the following records. And if you if you click on add record, you can easily add new records right to, to that particular table. Yeah, you can see uh, here you can add new new records. If we go and this is something important, right? If we go to course, course is the main table, and this main table has uh, additional columns. You will see that in addition to course, I for example has course category, language, le course level, modality, but also I have description, I have end date, is open, uh, all the, the fields that we saw in a previous example, in a previous video with, with SQL, it's a very similar structure. Basically, we are replicating that in, in Dataverse. And you will see that these are lookup columns. The lookup columns basically, basically are relationship between the main table and the other tables. If you want to establish relationship on, on those tables, you just click here in the relationship tab and you can add relationships. Right, right? You can add uh, many to many, one to many, many to one right for example what i did is i went to the course category table and since this table has a relationship with uh, 
one to many with the courses table. I click here and I click on add one to many. So you can specify, okay, one category could be related to many and you can select many courses. Yeah, actually it's, it's here, right? I can add that uh, relationship from here, right? But that relationship already exists. We go to data. You will see here that I have previously also add uh, values to to my table. So the intention of this video is not to show you exactly how Dataverse works. It's, it's more like to, to show you the comparison between SQL and, and Dataverse. But I wanted to give you a, a quick introduction to how to use Dataverse, right? If you want a, a specific video on how to build your tables and how to build your, your full database using Dataverse, let me know. I, I will be more than happy to create a, a video for that. So let's go to the table. So something interesting is that if you want to add a Dataverse table, right you can basically look at here you can see the different tables that are available here obviously i, I previously added the ones that belongs to my environment right which are, which are the ones that are here um to implement the, this functionality in the home screen it's going to be very similar to what we did in sql first of all if we go to the category the combo box you will need in the items property you will need to specify the name of your table right in this case, my table is course categories. Uh, the same is going to be for modality, for level, language, and um, professor. It, so uh, the, the process is exactly the same. Remember that, that when we did that in SQL, basically we had to, to specify the name of the table. In the case of Dataverse, we are just specifying as, as equal the name of the Dataverse table. The other thing is going to be the filter. Remember, and if we go to the documentation, most of the filters are going to be delegable to Dataverse as, as well as to SQL, right? So the functionality, it's going to work as SQL as it, it worked in, in, SQL, in the SQL database example. Basically, we use this filter. Uh, we are using the same functions and expressions as we did in, in the other example. The only thing that is changing is the name of the table and the specific column that we are evaluating. So for example, first of all, the, 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 the source is the is courses, which is the name of the table, that uh, the main table in Dataverse, right? And to specify the, the field that we are evaluating, we need to specify the, the table a dot and the name of the, of the specific field for, from that table. Why? Because this table could have different uh, fields. If we look at the, the sample in SQL, remember that what we did was basically to specify the field from that, from that view. Why? Because we, in this example, we created a SQL view. In the case of Dataverse, we are not creating a view. We are basically just get, getting the value from the corresponding tables. This course category is basically the lookup column. And from that lookup column, we can evaluate different fields. We can evaluate the ID, the name, or other fields. We can basically click here and specify which is the field that we would like to evaluate, right? You will see here the different fields from that lookup column. In this case, it's going to be the name. So that's the way it's going to work. The, the, the function is exactly the same. Perfect. And the performance is going to, it's going to be optimal because all the functions are delegable. Now, if we go to, for example, numeric filters, you will see that the numeric filters are going to be exactly the same as it was in the, in the SQL example. We are using the same functionality. The only thing that is changing is uh, the table name as well as the field that we are evaluating. In this case, we are evaluating the total, total hours field, but, but the filters are exactly the same right that's not going to change remember that if we go and we compare to the data to the sql example is it exactly the same the only thing that is changing is the name of the of the field or or column now if we go to let's say text filters in the case of text filters again it's going to be very similar the only thing that is changing because actually we are using the same filter the, the same expressions is the name of the table again and the name of the field that we are evaluating. Now let's go to the other example, which is for, exa for example, search function, right? In the case of search, uh, now this is something new and interesting. Uh, uh, it's, the, it, it's the particularity on how we uh, use the search function in Dataverse. In this case, obviously you specify the, the table name 
you specify the text and you need to specify the columns. But in this case, we will need to specify the, the internal name of the column, right? We, will, we want to specify the, the display name, right? If you want to know which, which are the, the internal names, first of all, this is very easy because you can click, you can put comma and you will see the suggestions here, right? And it will be very easy to, to identify which are the columns that we need to specify. But if you are not sure, you can basically go to the Power App Maker, go to your solution and go to, for example, the course table. And here you will see all the, the columns that belongs to that table. And um, you can see the display name as well as the internal name. So those are the names that you're going to use. The internal names are going are gonna to be the ones that you are going to use to uh, apply the filters using the search function. One interesting characteristic is that in this case, Dataverse only allow me to search by text fields. N name and description are text fields. Well, ac actually, this description is a multi-line text field. But here I can, for example, use category. So that's, that's basically a limitation I found. In the case of SQL, it was possible to filter by category because it was a text value. And this is because we created a SQL view. In the case of Dataverse, we are not using a view. We are basically using a, a table. And category is a lookup column. So it's not a text column. We can search by that specific field. Now, maybe that you could, you could find some work around. Maybe you can create a, a view and you can make that column a text value or you can create calculated columns. So there are ways to, to achieve that. If, but in this particular case, this is just an example for you to, to understand that it's possible. It's uh, supported. It's this function is again delegable to Dataverse. So that's perfect. We can also use sort functions, right? In this case, we are sorting the values by unit price right in descending order um now let's look at the another filter another interesting filter is date filter this is another thing that is different in dataverse and it's one of the benefits of dataverse that it support a filtering by date type data type field so if you go here you will see that basically we don't need to create a calculated column a calculated number column we just need to apply the filters directly to that to that date time, in this case to the start date, which is a date time field. So it works, it's legible, it's gonna work perfectly. And the final case is operator. Now, here is where we see that there are delegation warnings. I think in, in the, the first video I show you that the use of operators in a filter are not delegable. If you look at this validation, right, or, or this uh, expression, you will see that we will get the del delegation warning. What that means again is that if you have more than 500 records, remember that you can go here in file, you can go to settings and in advanced settings, you can change this value by default is 500. What it means is that you are using non-delegable queries, right, or, or expressions, Power Apps, Canvas App will be able to process up to 500 items. You can change this to 2,000 items. So let's say you put the maximum of 2,000. If your Dataverse database has more than 2,000 items, you will face uh, some issues because the function will, won't be able to, to apply that, that specific filter. One way to look, to look at how this is going to affect your, your results is there are two ways. First of all, when there is a warning, you will see this specific icon, right? But another simple way to, because remember in this, in this particular example, I just has a few items, right? We don't have more than 500 items here, so we can validate if this expression is working. Actually, let me, let me show you something. If we go here and we apply the filter, let's say we apply, this is working and it looks like, like it's working, right? But it's working because we have less than 500 items. Now what happened if actually, let me, let me put that again. We see in this example, 10,000, we see that we have three items now, what, uh, but this query is being processed in the, in the front end. In, we are not delegating that query to the backend, right? So what happened in, if you, if we want to validate how this will affect your, your experience, you can quickly do that. For example, put in the value of one. Right, that's a, an easy way to validate if that if your function is delegable. So let me see if this works. So let's see. Let's say if we apply this filter, you will see that we are getting just one item. 
because the, we changed the delegation option to, to one item. This is, this is affected when you are using non-delegable functions, but if you go to the home page, you will see that that, that is not affecting the number of items that, that we are getting because all of that, those filters are delegable. The same for text, the same for search. But if you go to this screen where we are using non-delegable functions, you will see that we won't be able to get the number of records that we are expecting. Okay, that was all for today's video. If you like this content, please don't forget to subscribe. And if you have feedback or recommendation for next videos, please put your comments below. In our next video, we will explore Dataverse for Teams. We will create our Power Apps application by using Dataverse for Teams as a data source. So see you in the next video. Bye.